Welcome, this is a 10 ready practice test for geometry. Question number 12, we're in subpart 2, so we can use calculator here. The question says the measurements of the circumference and radii of circles with different areas are recorded and analyzed. Which statement justifies why this information can be used to approximate the value of pi? So essentially it's saying we have different areas available to us. And we want to, or circles with different areas, I should say. And then we're going to look at, okay, let's look at their circumference, and then let's look at their radii and see if we can, you know, get a feel for what happens. So I may make some samples that I can use. A radius of 12, a radius of, let's say, 8, and a radius, or 2, sorry, and a radius of 12. I was thinking ahead. Now, if you are aware of the nature of using pi, in this sort of mathematics, you can sort of skip to the answer very quickly. The idea of pi, not as the Greek letter, but used in this form, was really created to show a relationship between circumference and diameter. That's the reason why it exists in the first place. Essentially, people would capture information about the circumference of various circles and then the diameter, which is, of course, the distance all the way through from one side to the other, going through the center, of course. Otherwise, it's not. So it goes all the way through. So they wanted to see, is there some relationship between this distance and distance all the way around? And you have to lie to yourself and pretend like this is a circle because I realize it doesn't look like one at all. It's pretty bad. Um, with that being said, they found that if we multiply the diameter that we have by this value of pi, which is this ridiculous irrational number that goes on forever, there's even contest um, to memorize the digits in it. If we multiplied it by that, we would find out that we could get the circumference. So there's something in here that speaks to that directly. But we want to talk about the radius. I only show you this because we know that the diameter, uh, if I have two radii, I can get my diameter. So we come up with our circumference formula of 2 times pi times radius. Our area formula, by the way, is pi r squared. All that, ready to go. So let's just look at a few examples and see if we can get a feel for it. And I'll do circumference here and area here. So since we need to get a look for what the actual values happen to be, I'm going to bring this up so that I can just do a quick analysis. You won't need to do this level of analysis, I don't think, but maybe you will, who knows. I also realize that this is, looks like a minus and it's supposed to be an equal. So I'm going to take my value of 2 here and substitute it into this. So 2 times 2, that's my radius there, times pi. Oops. There it is. And I get 12.56. And actually be 12.57 if I run to the hundreds. Or I might say, okay, 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 pi. I can do the same thing for 8. 2 times a radius of 8 times a radius or times pi. Fifty point two seven and that would be 16 pi. And then 2 times 12 or 24 pi. Now from here I'm going to do the same thing for area, but I'll just use like the magic of the internet here really fast, and in one second all of them will pop up. All right, so there you go. Other than this being maybe the worst four I've ever done, and the 64 pi looking pretty terrible right here, we're good to go. Now, let's look at the choices that we have and see if we can do an analysis of this. The area of the circle varies inversely as the radius. So what they're saying is, as the radius size increases, the area of the circle would get smaller, or as the 
area of the circle increases, the radius would get smaller. That's what inverse relationships are. And as you can see, the radius increases means the area is going up, so that's totally out. Um, the circumference of a circle varies inversely. Remember, inversely just means when one goes up, the other goes down. That's not happening either, so that's out. Now we're going to look at what's the difference between direct uh, variations for the circumference versus the area. In order to determine whether I have a direct variation, what the easy move is to see if it has essentially the same, we're going to treat it as if it has the same slope. So I'm going to use the slope formula to do a quick analysis of that sort of thing. That's mine. And then those are my values for the slope formula. These would be my x values here. So for instance, the first one would be 50.27, and I don't know why I wrote 7 first, minus 12.27. Because I want to see how far apart these two numbers are. And then I'll just do 50.27 goes with the 8 of radius. And the other one goes with 2. So I'm going to type that up really fast. And I'll do a similar one for this. For 12 and 1 for this. And I'll show you what that looks like. Power of the internet. Alright, so here's this all going. And I'll hit enter and I get 6.28. So similarly, I'll do this number 75.40 and I'll subtract 50.27 and do 12 minus 8. The key is to take make sure that this number if it goes first then that 12 needs to go first on the denominator. You can use this one and subtract out too that's fine but you have to do them the same way. If I'm comparing this I went with the one that was further into the radius. The radius is larger first, so this one should have the larger radius as well. Otherwise, you may not be able to compare them. So, see how these numbers are almost exactly the same? That indicates that in what I've created, it, we have a direct variation because it goes up by the same amount every time. Now, let's look at one or the two with area and see if we get the same thing, which would make all of my calculations that have just done sort of a sham. Which, to be fair, may be something that you're interested in seeing. Me just totally mess this up, but I can't imagine you want this thing to go much longer. So, 62.835, that sort of makes sense. Thirty one point four one five. See these aren't the same, it's not a direct variation. So I can mark out the fact that the area goes up too fast and circle that the circle varies directly as the radius increases. Now, could I have figured that out based on what we talked about earlier? Yeah, probably. So if you knew that information, you may be able to move a lot faster. But we did we did get to talk about inverse relationships. We got to talk about what varies directly actually means and how to do that. So you got some stuff out of this, even if you didn't need to go through all this, these calculations as an idea. And later on, if you're asking yourself, where did you get 2, 8, and 12? I just made them up. You can pick any radius that you want. It's just a way to check. Uh, I tend to do one that, ones that are a little bit further apart than just do 1, 2, 3, because sometimes you get false hopes in the very beginning when you set those sorts of things up. So that's it.